Take the chance and roll the dice. Just wanna feel the stars around. The atmosphere never to come down. I'll stand alone, whether right or wrong. It takes me home right where I belong. Back down, only one way out. I'll let you run my life. Now you won't get me down. Untamed, guess I lost my mind. Even egg. Welcome to Friday stream. Blood Angels. Uh, not quite what I planned. I am doing the Beast of Nurgle. I did promise to do the Beast of Nurgle. And so the Beast is here. Um, so I will be doing uh, a couple of blood effects on him. Because I did want to get those finished off. Um, plus I'll also be doing some... Um, yeah, I might go and do the eyes. I don't know. Uh, I'll definitely be adding some effects to the boils and so on, and then see how we get on. Uh, decide what else I want to do. Maybe some slime trails. Don't know, really. We will decide as we go. But um, tonight, yes, mostly Blood Angels, actually. Um, I was doing, if you were here on Wednesday stream, the Night Haunts. Yeah. Um, and the plan was I was going to carry on with the Night Haunts tonight, funnily enough. Uh, but actually, I managed to do a bit of the. Um, prep work for them so that's that's all drying at the moment so i did some base work prep work for the airbrush to do the next four um plus start doing the characters so i had a look at them and thought mm, rather than sort of rush into doing the airbrush on those to try and get ready for the stream and then doing the painting we'll do we'll finish off some other projects uh, and i'll come back to these so i kind of got a couple of dual projects running at the moment um and i'll uh talk a little bit about that later on tonight as we're going to be making a decision what I'm doing next so let's part the beast up for a bit um, and we'll come back and do the effects on him later because I don't want to mess up the palette uh, so I've got a few bits and pieces on these these were the three blood angels that I did for the cult of paint uh, infantry course um, so there are varying palettes there are varying effects that they're really just testers Oh, not testers. They've, I've done Blood Angels before. Uh, they're more... Um, we're just trying out a couple of different techniques. Sort of honing a couple of different techniques and palettes. Hey, Random. How you doing? Welcome to Friday. Welcome to the weekend. Technically, it's a weekend for me. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, so Blood Angels are a thing. Um, 
this guy was done. I got him based up a little while ago. I think I was showing one of the bases, and so I had a spare one. Uh, so he cracked on with that and got him mounted. But some other bits and pieces and detailing I'd like to get finished on him. Um, so while I was doing that, uh, I primed another couple of bases. So we will race through those this evening. Uh, so I can get the other two guys mounted. That'd be good. So they won't take long. Bases really don't take very long at all. Um, try to work out if I should have added some textures to this actually, but uh, I'll probably use pigments instead, and I'll just cover this lot with pigments. Hey, dust dread. <laughs> yeah, it is quite just dread. You mean this one with the eagle? Yeah, it is a bit dread, isn't it? Um, I just want something a little bit different on this fella. Yeah, make him stand out. So he's got the uh, he's got the legion. He's got the the 30k legion head on. He's obviously Primaris. I've added a couple of other bits and then used some of the pauldrons and so on from um, different sets. The reason the colour, the palette is slightly different is the body was one Henry was doing, uh, using it on a demo. Uh, but the, uh, the arms and the shoulder pads were ones I'd done and the head separately. So when they married up, we had a disagreement on exactly how high the highlight should be. <laughs> so it was a little bit different. This is more was more the palette I'd gone for, which was a little bit more uh, a little bit more muted than Henry's. Suffice to say, Henry was right. Uh, his palette was the right one. Need to tidy up these oil streaks on the bot on the back there. They're a little bit they need sorting out. Uh, but yeah, we'll finish them. Yes, Angels, long time no see. Hey, Ryan, welcome. Lurk away, my friend. Uh, and then, yeah, there was this, uh, what I will call not Death Company. It's just an alternate palette for my Blood Angels for a couple of the squads. I say not Death Company because uh, there is no Death Company for Primaris so far. But I really like the palette, so I want to do that for, uh, for these guys. I might do a few more of those, and we'll talk about that a little bit later on, because I've got some decisions to do on what, which project I do next, which will be related to this in one way or another. Either this one, or this one. Doesn't really matter. Hey, Bob. How you doing? Um, yes, I have much the same sentiment on this week as well. <laughs> Not the 40k would ever reference anything from Judge Red. No, God forbid. Absolutely. No, no plagiarism whatsoever. Goodness, no. Can't imagine that happening one bit. Right, let's have a let's have a look and see what I need to finish in some of these guys, just so I can get them based and out of the way. Well, actually, that, that's a good point. Let's, let's let's get the bases done, and then the bases are out of the way. Yeah. So then I can get them mounted, and they'll be done tonight. That's kind of my plan. So what should we do? So most of them are just uh, going to be either tread plate or something like tread plate. So. Let's start with the usual grubby mix of... What have I got? I've got some warp lot bronze there. And I've got some lead belcher. I've got some... Cade metal somewhere. A bit of rhinox. Yeah, and decayed metal, lovely. There we go. My favourite mix. So let's start with a bit of decayed metal. I think I've still got some rust colours on the palette actually, so that's good. I can make use of some of those. So what have we got here? Mm, what's that? It's like a sort of oh, it's like a dark brown, that'll do. Let's have that. Don't know where it is, but it'll do. We'll mix a bit of that in. We'll take a little bit of this rusty whatever it is, we'll have that. And mix a bit of rhinox in as well. Busy fixing three machines that don't want to work properly. Now they've been moved. Well, like moved as in made to go and stand in the corner. So like a kind of made to sit on the naughty step or something. Kind of the shame corner. So 
What sort of machines are we talking about, Paul? I mean, they're not going to get bitter and twist, are they? I mean, we're not talking like the start of Skynet or something. Right, uh, I might just, before I get a bit too carried away, just mount these bases on um, some old film cartridges with a bit of blue tack, just because they're easier to handle. So sort of squish them down on that. That's a bit easier. Result. And we'll just literally just get this all over that tread plate. Misses a few bits, I don't really mind. It's pulling away a bit because A, it's quite warm, and B, these weren't primed that long ago, so I doubt the primers had long enough to cure effectively. But uh, it's going to be so much put on this base, it doesn't really matter. I will move from one factory to another one down the road. Okay. As you can see, I'm using my rubbish brushes for this. I know it's the thing it's rubbish brushes just well loved. No, they're rubbish. <laughs> Sorry, they are rubbish. This one, this one's high. What was it actually? This was a Womp base brush. This did fine and sterling service for a good couple of years actually. It's not that rubbish. Um, but it's definitely at the end of its life. It's lost its point now, so. Well, not lost its point as in it doesn't serve any purpose. It clearly does serve purpose. I meant it's lost its point like it's lost its little point. Right, uh, we shall give this a quick dry with a hairdryer, so I'll just go on mute. Ugh, still something unnatural about using a hairdryer in this weather. Just far too warm. Hey Sam, how you doing? I am good. How are you keeping? I have pre-stretch machines turning big rolls of stretch film into hand reels. Nice, that's fairly industrial stuff. Right, uh, so let's add the first, first level of weathering. Uh, so, what a lot of bronze? I keep having to look which camera on. I'm on the wide camera tonight, so I'll duck into the close cam when I need to. Uh, so I'll just get some of this onto the palette, and we are going to sponge this on, I think. Sorry, chip. Chip it on. Uh, when I find where my little chipping sponges. There we go. It'll do. Ha, ha, ha. 
<laughs> I said, that's, that's not the attitude, Sam. I said I made off with the Army Painting Awards for a change. Look, okay, it's only the second Tarsis I've done. Okay, so it's a bit harsh to say, make it out like I, I just clean up the awards all the time. I don't clean up the awards all the time. And actually, it was pretty damn close. Yeah, there were some seriously good armies there. But yes, I did get both of the painting awards, uh, Tarsus. Which was awesome. Um, I felt I was in with the shout, you know, particularly with the, the, the demons and so on. And this guy, I was so, so pleased how, how uh, him, her, it turned out. You know, that was a lot of fun. Uh, but um, now there's some really cool armies there, man. Jack's Death Guard were awesome. Uh, that was a lot of good stuff. Ben's Blood Angels, really nice, great hobby. Uh, Harry's Harry's Militia were awesome, actually. I loved Harry's Militia. They were really good. Well, Harry was definitely in with the shout. Dan Collister, yeah. So well, you've seen, you've seen. So Dan's uh, Dan's fists were amazing. I love the black scheme on his fists. I had a really really good scheme. Right. That's that, so now we will go on to the lead belcher. Uh, have I seen the Art Dystopia's pre-production display they had on Insta? No. No. A pre-production display of what? D what? Just their brushes? They're Rosemary Co. anyway. <laughs> At the end of the day, they're just Rosemary and Co. brushes, you know. They've just got, oh no, they've just got a rebranding. I don't know why everyone's... I don't know why C Studio have been so secretive about it. It's just like, Rosemary and Co. are great brushes. This this brush here, this 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 completely trashed Womp brush, is a Rosemary and Co. I got two amazing years out of that. I thought it was every bit as good as the Series 7. Yeah, I got a load of uh, Rosemary and Co. brushes. In fact, I only put an order in the other weeks um, for some Series 33s. Uh, I'm glad somebody actually said it. Well, I, mean, I don't know it for a fact, but I'm pretty confident from the way everyone's dancing around the issue that they're Rosemary and Co. And there's nothing wrong with Rosemary. It's like, like it's a bad thing, you know? Well, why is it a bad thing? Rosemary and Co make amazingly good brushes. As I say, I, as I, I did the Womp Kickstarter, yeah? This is the Womp Womp. Fabulous, fabulous brush. I got, in fact, I got a whole bunch of want ones here. I'm not really used. Look at this massive want vehicle brush, Rosemary and Co. Yeah, really good. Huge thing. It's, it's just, I don't, I've not even used this one, I don't think. Yeah, look at that. I mean, that's about, I guess, about a size million, and it comes up to a really nice point. Push, yeah, I don't know what I, I, I don't get the whole secret squirrel malarkey on it. But there you go. I backed it, because as I say, they're rosemary and go. I just like the look of the brushes. Uh, all the stuff they had on Kickstarter. Oh, right, including the um, the plaques and the boxes and so on. Good stuff. Sounds good. Right, yeah, so I'm just doing a little bit of chipping the uh, metal work. I'll try and get a bit more of the metal on this one. I don't actually want it to look all that bronzy. I want it to look mostly silvered. So I'll do a bit more on the tread plate on this one. And I'm going to go over and add a few more layers yet. Same with this fella. Focus on the edges. This will be the first of a number of layers. This does great. I mean, you know, I, I defy anyone not to be able to paint bases because it's practically finger painting. Yeah. Seriously unleashing one's inner six year old. It's great. I'm leaving all the area around it because I don't mind getting earth and some of the earth, you know, pigments and textures over the metal, but 
vice versa I don't really want to paint the earth and then get metallic flake on it because that would just look weird there we go let's get rid of that bit of sponge it's past its usefulness like I said on the last stream sponge just use this stuff or blister packaging or you know wife's makeup sponge or whatever or your makeup sponge Right, let's get a slightly more metallic-y like, tone, something a bit sharper. Uh, we will go... Well, actually, what haven't I used that might be interesting? Oh, I haven't used this. No, that's chrome. Let's not use that. That's too much. Ah! Oh, yes, there's a couple of good ones we haven't used, so let's just use them for the hell of it. So, I have this. I've not really used this. This is a, a semi-matte aluminium from the Metal Colour series. Um, you can see it's a map because it's sort of separated out dramatically at the bottom there. Uh, let's give that a shake. And the other one I've got, which is quite nice, I don't know whether I really want to go and put it on there, is Burnt Iron. This is lovely. This is great. Burnt Iron's lovely for, um, it's got quite a brown tone to it. It's really nice for pistons on knights. Go on for the airbrush. Hey, Modular. I'm good. Welcome. How you doing? Yeah, we did get metallics in the earth, it could be a mining area, a lot of half excavated metals near the surface. Yeah, good point. Or someone been salting it. <laughs> it's attempted mechanicum scam. <laughs> That'd be quite good as well. Uh, let's try this flat aluminium and see what it looks like. I'm not convinced, I think it might be a bit weird. Plus, it looks like it needs a massive amount of shaking. So, apologies for the background noise. I've not used this one at all, so it's uh, not in a usable form yet. Uh, aren't they more expensive than the Rosemary equivalent, though? Yeah, they are. But then again, they're not the same. You know, so you're not buying Series 33s. They have been specced to be slightly differently. So the ferrules and the length of the handles and the weight and the finish will be different. Yeah. The brushes, uh, the bristle length will probably be slightly different to the Series 33. So that's what Womp did. If I... Uh, let me find some... Let me go to my little brush box. Uh, See, I do this every time. See, I start off with a project and I get going and you lot distract me, honestly. Like a magpie. Right, let me get my brush box. Uh, this is my spare brushes, because like I collect brushes something appallingly. So, dead blood angel. Uh, Rosemary Co, Rosemary Co, Womp, here we go. So they do things like this where they will do slightly different specs. So let me come onto the main cam a little bit. So this is one of the the Womp ones, which again is Rosemary Co, and they call it a blender, whatever that means. But it just means that they've gone from much longer bristle. You'll see a couple of hairs are split out there. It's because it's brand new. Still got the um, uh, it's still got the, the the kind of the whatever it is the bristle restorer on it. But if you look at that, it's quite you know that's a really long ferrule and it's a really long bristle. Yeah, with quite a straight belly to it. It's not got not got a particularly full belly. Uh, so, you know, the Rosemary Co are really good at doing particular uh, specs. So like this one, this is a good one. So they call this the liner. So this one, again, got really, really long straight bristles, which is supposedly, supposedly good for um, doing, you know, straight lines and so on. You're actually doing lining, which I can sort of see, you know, because you've got a lot more control because just of the flex on it. Yeah, so it's not at the end of the day a good painter give them a brush with a decent point and snap to it and they'll work wonders with it yeah so it's kind of gimmicky but there's a whole bunch of stuff like that in here or like this one haven't even tried this one this was a clues the title flat brush so they do like really really small flat brushes which would be you know good for doing blending or whatever or I haven't got a clue there's a whole bunch of stuff pinstriping brush thank you Sam yeah which probably comes from people who do sign writing, you know? Uh, what else we got in here? Mm, what's that one? A stippling brush. <laughs> I just use crappy old brushes. But you get the idea, you know, they've got an irregular brush that's got, if you look at the way that that bristle has been cut, I might do it where you can actually see it on camera. 
yeah it's been done to be cut at an angle so and it's deliberately splayed it's a deliberate difference so that's not Kalinsky sable I don't know whether that's it doesn't look like horse hair that's that's different hair hog hair maybe but anyway so the idea is this was good for stippling yeah and you should just trash brush yeah cool all the same yeah so I suspect the Opus stuff has just been specced a little bit differently, that's all. Back you go. Uh, right, what was I doing before you lot distracted me? Oh yeah, I was doing the semi-mat, wasn't I? On these bases. Hey Builder, how you doing? Welcome. Uh, pitch rope, which is like a weird discipline on its own. Yeah, yeah. If you ever watched a really good sign writer, freehand signs, it's an amazing skill. Or a pinstriper. Actually, yeah, we used to work. So have you ever seen the YouTube video of the guy doing the pinstripes on the um, Royal Enfield tanks, the motorbike tanks? Extraordinary. Absolutely extraordinary. Right, I'm not liking the look of this, Matt, at all, but we'll give it a go. Let's see what that looks like. Oh, I don't know. Kind of, kind of weird. quite like that flat aluminium. I'm gonna put obviously put washers and stuff over this yet. Yeah. Just gonna have layer upon layer. I just want to get these bases done quite quickly. So I'm just concentrating this a little bit on the the spars. Oh camera slightly okay We'll do maybe a couple more in there. Then we'll do some rust and stuff. Right, hair dryer again. Merenshaw, they have to use to send paint jobs off the specialist pinstripe but to do just the line work. Yeah, totally believe it. I mean, it's an absolute skill in its own right. Uh, I didn't do the burnt iron in the end, so I'll, maybe I'll do that after I put on the um, the washers and so on. So let's do the first the first layer. So I'm going to use good old uh, underwash. Uh, actually, should I do the earth colours first and then just slap the underwash on? No, I won't, because I want some different texture. If I put the Wonder Wash over the earth pigments, I'll get them glossy, which I don't want. I'm going to move it over and put the Wonder Wash on a different part of the palette, because I don't want it contaminating stuff. going on. I want to paint my alien but I think a nap might be in order first. <laughs> I know what I'd want to do. Yeah, nap. I see Blood Angels. You do indeed see Blood Angels, Monjo. You do. These were the um, these were the three Blood Angels that I did at the um, Cult Paint uh, class. Just to 
uh, practice some new kind of new palettes and new techniques and so on. Um, I was, as I was just saying at the start of the stream, so if you well you were here, Wednesday. Uh, I was doing these guys, obviously. I wanted to crack on with those tonight, but the next batch, I kind of got them at that stage where I've done all the basing and they're ready for the airbrush, but I haven't got the airbrush primer done, so uh, they weren't quite ready. So I'm kind of doubling up on projects at the moment. I will be carrying on with these. I want to get these finished pretty soon. Um, so I thought, actually, I've got these three still kicking around. Two of them don't have bases on yet. I just want to get them done because I want to move on to a new project. And I will be, as I promised, coming back and doing this guy, uh, doing the blood effects on him a little later this evening. We've got plenty of time. We've only been on streaming half an hour. So before I go back to the Blood Angels, I just want to get those bases done quickly. I'm not sure they just aren't slightly confused word bearers. No, let's not talk about the word bearers. Don't want to do any more word bearers for a little while now. I was, I will confess, looking at some of Victoria Miniature's Beastman, uh, Beastman Militia, because uh, who would want to do Beastman Militia for word bearers? Because that would be freaking awesome. <laughs> so I was looking at them, but then talked myself out of it. Uh, since this one has not been done to stop me doing a new project. <gasps> Hush your mouth. Right, I'm going on mute. I'm going to hair dry these. Nah, not quite dry yet, so I might just have to um, do a couple more things on these first. I don't like painting when they're hot as well. I need to get a cool hairdryer, so I might move. I'm just going to move back on to doing the ultra, the ultramarines, on to doing the blood angels for a bit, and we'll let those just cool down. Uh, see the word bearers on Instagram. Very nice. Oh, thank you, Bell. Um, that's not all of them. That's most of them, probably. I think the chaplain and the plague bearers are still to go on there. Uh, might be one or two other units. I can't remember. Most of them are up there now, though. Uh, I did want to promise to get them on there. They are on. There's a page done for the site. I haven't published it yet because I do need to finish writing some of the the content. But uh, most of the imagery is done. Just need to finalise it. So I'll do that this weekend. Right. Okay. So. This guy's pretty much there. I don't think I need to do all that much on him. Just this little skull on the, the shoulder here. Uh, so if I got a scroll to do on him, I have... Right, so I'll do these two. I don't think he's got any scroll work to do. Oh, yes, he has. He's got one on the bolt, bolt there. So we'll do that. Right, so... Uh... English uniform, I think. I'm going to follow the same bone recipe I used for the uh, the ghosties. Just need to find some English uniform. There we go. Lovely colour. <laughs> yeah, these ugly traitors. <laughs> Yeah, so as I was saying, I was looking at doing the, um, or getting some of Victoria Miniatures uh, Beastmen. And maybe some of the last chance to buy Enforcers or Overseers or whatever they were from Forge World. And a few other bits and pieces and doing a militia list. Um, and then I had a quick look in the in book five at how many <laughs> flipping, flipping militia I'd need. And they're like, the inducted levies are a base of 20 and you kind of need at least two levies 
Tyra's no. <laughs> Forty. Hey, it was your birthday builder. Happy birthday! Congrats, chap. Bone's not the greatest choice for this at this stage because obviously I've done a, a sort of gold um, disc. So now I've got no contrast, but by the time I've done the bone and sharpen that gold up, it'll be all right. I should probably have done the skull in something like red but, or white. But it's gonna be quite close to white when the ivory's on there anyway. It will do. These are all tabletop armies, so you know, I don't want to get too carried away with them. Not for competition, this is purely for my 40k indulgence. Maybe a kill team, I don't know. So there's a question, I'm, I'm struggling with the old dilemma. Kill team, yay or nay? Because it goes on pre-order tomorrow, isn't it? I mean, I was like, automatically, yay! And then I was kind of, actually nay, because Titanicus is coming, and it's going to be coming very soon. So do I really need another box set? And then I looked at them and went, yay. And then I thought, no, definitely not doing it. Titanicus. And today I'm yay-ish. So I don't know. I don't know if I get it or not. Kind of seems like a nice box, but... A lot of really nice terrain in it. But I don't really need any more terrain. I like the fact that the kits are interchangeable. But do I really need some more Skitari and GC the Cult? I don't know. So I'm conflicted because I want to put all my monies into Titanicus. Personally, I'm in a kind of wait and see mode with Kill Team. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm airing towards the I'm not going to bother with it and just see what happens. Plus, there's also the fact that I know I'm going to have to spend at least a couple of kidneys worth to get into Titanicus. So I feel that's money better off saved right now. Oh yeah, there's a scroll on the bolter as well, hadn't it? So. <laughs> Chips assemble enough of the new terrain for the whole of Gloucestershire anyway. I shall check it out tomorrow. That's the only danger, of course, once I get in there and Chip starts showing me it all and trying to demo it. I'll end up buying it or something. But yeah, as usual, he's done enough train to, to pretty much rehouse half of Gloucestershire. <laughs> In small plastic ruins. So Sam, having not been able to make this Tarsus, you're gonna gonna go for October? Was it three and a half, three and a half, four thousand points worth? No kind of list restrictions. All the toys. I 
Mm. No scroll that side, that's good. Uh, you're not sold on the terrain. All oh, right, okay. Oh, it doesn't fit the heresy scheme. Yeah, I mean, the terrain, to be fair, is probably more aimed at 40k, so it's super gothic rather than heresy. So, yeah, good point. It's probably not a very heresy look. Do I, do I want to do this in gold or do I want to do it in bone? I don't know. I'll decide later. Small plastic ruins, probably still nicer than many council states. Couldn't possibly comment. Uh, tickets on sale when you have no money, so probably not. Ah, oh, bummer. No, I'm not doing it. Anyway, I've already said to Tom. Although I may be helping out. I've said I'm more than happy to help out on the day, so I will be there, which possibly in a slightly different capacity. Or incapacity. <laughs> Depending how much I had to drink the night before. Uh, not yet, you don't, Sam. Because I haven't managed to pick up that holder yet. I'm gonna, when I pop over tomorrow, I'll try and grab one of these. Uh, don't want to use English uniform on his hair while I've got on the palette. Might as well. Might as well make him super blondie. Color. So that was the English uniform. The row cut. Uh, which is a sort of desaturated yellow. I'm just going to mix that in with the English uniform. Just to create a couple of tones for me. I'll do. Ha! Of course, you practically can't see it against the paper. Slightly ironic, because I stopped using white uh, baking parchment or whatever it is, baking paper.
Come back and add some shading to that in a bit. You're off a nap is definitely in order. <laughs> is it still hot there, Builder? Well, thank you for dropping by and hanging out. Always appreciated. Maybe on later tonight. Cool. Well, have a good nap, my friend, and have a great stream. Did I like the 30k Blood Angels Praetors? Mmm, yes and no. I like I like the design. I thought they were very cool. I'm not liking the 3D sculpting of the organics on them, like the hair. Kinda had banana hair. What was that about? Um not as bad as the wolves, but it's kind of that same process. I think they look good, I just don't think they I think they could look better. Um, but I understand that, you know, for expediency, 3D design is, is you know, CAD's going to be the way for Forge World for some stuff. But, you know, I look at that and then look at the work that Simon does. You know, you look at Junichi Kral, which is just incredible, you know. So, yeah, I like it. I think, you know, as a mini, it's nice. It's got a nice design. It just didn't, it, you know, I just don't think he's top tier. That's just my opinion. Wouldn't stop me buying it, but uh, I think there are better, there are definitely, definitely better predators. Well, were they technically unfinished or were they just mistakes? I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what the story is behind it. You know, I hear a lot of anecdotal comments about they were rushed. I get, you know, I hear all that. But I don't know, you know, what the backstory was with them. So I think they look nice. Um, I just, I think there have been better ones, that's all. That being said, the heresy train. <laughs> How cool was the heresy train? that but as I say I don't know the I don't know the ins and outs and the details 
but I am looking forward to getting Crawl when she goes on uh, pre-order. I know she was on pre-release up at the um, Specialist Games Day, but uh, I did try and blag one off anybody. I'll wait till she goes on to general pre-order. We've been having some initial discussions and lining up the most the most excellent Jack from Anvils of Konor uh, to see if he would do a commission for me on Kroll to mess up her face. Which sounds like a horrible thing, but if you know the uh, heresy background, um, it would be very, very in character. Because I'd like to do a version of her without the rebreather, but have her still have her cannon, have her matching the um, backstory. That would be amazing. And Jack is incredible at that kind of work. So uh, very much looking forward to getting some uh, or working with him on some commissions. I said I'd like to at least commission one, if not a couple, Death Guard vehicles from him, or Death Guard characters. Certainly Death Guard vehicle, some description. You see his fell blade, Sam, the Tarsis, pretty awesome, with all the studs. Hey, on the first, how you doing? Several people, a different people to get some painting info for you, but nobody got it. Oh, what do you mean? What do you mean by painting info, Sam? What painting info? What are we talking about? Why is this camera out of focus? Where is this? Oh, there it is. Uh, we got another scroll. Sure, I got another scroll here. Oh yeah, this one. Go with the top highlight, miss. His modeling is cool, I don't mean his posing in Facebook. <laughs> yeah, okay. Ooh, the burn! Yeah, it was a super cool model. Uh, I got a couple of ideas I'd like to bounce off him, but. We'll see. I'm here, I'm your statue, your heart is a magnet, I'm coming at you. Girl, you're my target, I'm cleaning at you. You're a comment. Uh the helmet on this dude, it's one of the um Blood Angels Legion helmets. So it's the thirty K helmets for Blood Angels. It's sort of Primaris-ish, <laughs> so I just stuck it on there. Um, I'm not averse to doing different helmets on them. <laughs> oh, well, obviously. <laughs> so, pretty much done the same on this guy. Uh, yeah, it's the, uh, it's the Legion ones. It's the 30k Legion ones. Are these, are these the ones that they now stopped doing? I can't remember whether they stopped doing them or not. I can't keep track of what was on Last Chance to Buy. Oh, you did the same? Yeah, they're sweet, aren't they? They, they work really well. I mean, the shoulder pad is one of the ones from the, um, the Blood Angels plastic kits. They are... Um, I think the, the Blood Angels Legion helmets are lovely. They're very nice. Go really well with the Primaris. They all do. But out of all of the Legions, the Blood Angels, you know, well, Legions stroke chapters, I think the Blood Angels have the best, best selection of helmets. You know, the plastic kits just have so many. It's really good.
probably right up there with the Space Wolves in that regard. Yeah, Space Wolves have loads as well. I've been hoarding them for years. For the bone now, I want to bring in some of the uh, deck tan. When I find it, there it is. Deck tan. Blood Angel Legion stuff still there. Cool. That's good. Hey, there's some nice stuff. Oh, the open day sent spice to get Scoria's arm method. Well, you'd ask Will, yeah? So it's gonna be, I mean, one of a couple of painters that would do it, probably Giuseppe. It might have been Giuseppe that painted it. Um, that's just, well, that's Giuseppe, yeah? Giuseppe's on Facebook. He's really responsive. <laughs> Hydra not so dominatus. Wow, I don't know what that was. I just pulled an awesome bit off that bottle. That was amazing. Look at that bugger. I just hope he's on Facebook. He's be posting the heresy forums loads. Giuseppe's the one that painted the, um, he's, he's posted some Knights of recently, he's done a lot of the Titanica stuff, but he, uh, he posted, um, he did the Termite, he was the one that did the really awesome Termite. And Giuseppe's not at all secretive. He'll tell you, if you ask him for what colours he used, he'll tell you. Yeah, I'll tell you exactly what he used. So if he did Scoria, he'll say, tell you what he did. Or as I ask Will. Love the Legion Praetors for Alpha Legion. Yeah, the, the, interestingly, the Alpha Praetors um, look really nice. I think a lot of it is because of the poses as well. But don't get me wrong, I don't. I didn't dislike the Blood Angels Praetor. I thought he looked really good. I just didn't like the hair. I just thought he had banana hair. That was all. But I'll give him a helmet, you know? It doesn't have to have the bare head. And I suspect that's why they started doing them with two. Is that a new thing? Did they used to do the Praetors with helmets and bare heads? I can't remember. Or is it only because it's Blood Angels, so they all have to be pretty boy? Or ain't sure. Right. Hopefully his head is loose. Yeah, I think it is. Well, when I saw the pictures of them, they had a different head stuck to the base, um, which suggests that the, the, the heads are separate. They're normally separate anyway. They like to leave the heads separate so people can paint them separately. Just have to be pretty boys. I keep thinking I've missed something on him, but I don't know what it is. I'll go do the blood drops in a bit as well. Uh, once I've done this little bit of bone uh, bone work or scroll work, I will go back to the base. So I'll probably be flip flopping between the two a little bit. So I just want to keep the two in 
uh, both in progress. Do you know, I don't know really. I didn't, to be honest, um, on at first, I didn't really give it that much thought. What I did was I just picked three models that were slightly different in their style and posing. Um, I hadn't really thought through. I haven't given him the markings of a sergeant. I mean, obviously he's got the gold helmet, so he could be a vet. I mean, I'm like thinking on oh, this is either sergeant or a vet, I don't know. I. I'm not very codex. I don't follow the. Con I don't try and conform. I just do what I like. Yeah. So clearly, with you know the ostentatiousness of him, it could be anything. These could be vets. But I think you're right. He's probably a sergeant. Much like this one. I had a few people ooing and aahing about this because I've done it in the Death Company colours, to a degree. I haven't done the Death Company marking, but I have done it a little bit in the Death Company colours. Um. Whereas you clearly can't have Death Company in the Primaris. Uh, don't know why, but there you go. Because I think the Primaris dis uh, backstory is crap anyway. Uh, but I just like the colour scheme, so I've done them as just a pff, separate unit, really. You know, I just just like this scheme. I just picked them purely, just to play around with different colour schemes. That was all. Could make him a lieutenant. I could. I definitely could. Yeah. Um, I'm not a fan of the markings on the lieutenants in any of the Primara stuff where they've gone for those kind of, you know, the vertical stripes on the helmets, the two-tone stripes. It just kind of looks like racing cars to me. I just don't get it. Um, I'd just rather give them different looking helmets or different markings and make it their own. But yeah, I could, could definitely do them as a lieutenant. I haven't kind of gone anywhere mad with them. I love the Legion decals though. I think the Legion decals for the Blood Angels are awesome. Yeah, they really work. Right, okay, let's go back to these bases. How are we doing for time? We're about an hour in, that's great. I've still got time to go and do the Beastie. Plenty of time. So a quick drink. Uh, right, so this is set now, which is good. So let's do a bit of rust. Where do I want to do rust? I'd quite like to do some rust around the eagle. I don't necessarily want to pick the eagle out, actually. Maybe do a little rusty eagle. Yeah, pants, I thought, was hoping some of that paint was still wet on the palette, but it's not. Uh, so what should we do? Don't want to go brown with the Rhinox hides because that's too obvious. So let's get rid of that. And um, let's go a little bit brighter. So, Mournfang Brown or Vermin Brown? Vermin Brown's quite desaturated. Vermin Brown. I think <clears throat> Vermin Brown for the rust and then maybe, uh, oh actually no, maybe just some orange leather. No, Vermin Brown. Let's go with Vermin Brown. Let's go, let's go very bright. So we'll go Vermin Brown and Jacaro. But we can give it some texture first of all, so let's add a little bit of Typhus Corrosion. And I'm going to do what I did last time. I'm going to sponge the Typhus Corrosion on. Probably more on this one, and then around the Eagle. So it looks super shiny at the moment, but that's because um, it's got gloss varnish on it. Because the Wonder Wash is a acrylic floor varnish. So all I'm doing is just adding a little bit of texture here and there. Same with this one. Add some around this area. And then over the Eagle. For some reason I want the Eagle to be rusty. 
don't know why, just it's a nice idea. Well, actually, give me great contrast because then what I can do, yeah, here's a great idea. So let's let's put a load around that eagle. And just hit it with the hairdryer. I had a dream another doing a Primaris army. I was looking through the really old how to paint space marine book for ideas. Comedy dream. Okay. Um Blood Angels don't go that's right, yes, of course they don't. No. They just go for the solid colour, don't they? So they go for the gold for the vets. And then was it black or yellow? That's I remember now. It's yellow, isn't it? Which is why I've done gold. I don't like the yellow helmets on them. I know it's classic, I just like more of that Legion look. Hence why I've not done the, the Eagles black as well. I, so if I was gonna do them properly, I'd do the Eagles black and I would do the helmets yellow. But I don't, I actually like the Eagles done in gold and I like the helmets done in gold or just plain, or just the red, same red as this, yeah. So I just do them in the same color. No matter what an off color, I just do black or do like these guys, do them black, but then give them a white muzzle or something. Anything to be awkward, <laughs> basically. Uh, gold for HQ, blue for heavy sport, yeah, yellow for assault, that's it. Uh, unless you're in Terminator armor, in which case the suit speaks for itself. Uh, what's I doing? Look at that, that time I was talking, that's pretty much dried. I don't even have to use a hairdryer. How good was that? Right, okay. Vermin Brown. Another good one for doing kind of stains is uh, Storm Vermin Fur as well. This is really nice actually. This is watered down, it's quite good for doing sort of, you know, stains on, on bases. Maybe come on to that one in a bit. So let's go with a little bit of Vermin Brown and we'll water it down quite thin. So I've watered this down so it's not it's not like a wash but it is quite thin as you can see yeah. And then just as before, I'm going to sponge it on. I might even just use the bit of sponge that I had the typhus corrosion on. So I don't want to take too much paint off the sponge. I do want the sponge reasonably loaded. And I'm just going to dab it on. So what I get is bigger patches. And because they're thin, they'll dry a lot more transparent. Yeah, so you can go over this a number of times. But I just want to sort of get something irregular like that. When I get some rust on there, and then I'll dry it. And then I'll add some more rust using the Jacaro. That's quite nice. Let's have that. I'll do. Same in this one, I sort of almost want it to gather and pull into the crevices to all the recesses. Right, dry that. There you go, that's dried. As you can see, that's dried a lot darker already. Yeah, it's like cut back. You can see how much darker that dries and you get that sort of almost staining. 
you want that because you're trying to get a rusty effect so normally you wouldn't want any of the like the coffee stain effects the drying effects the watermarks except when you're trying to do this and then you definitely do want it since Alan Tor, welcome welcome to the stream hello all right so I'm gonna do exactly the same with the Jacaro orange and get it nice and thin so I think I've got a little bit left on the palette so let's grab that it looks still workable yeah it is still workable good and then do exactly the same as I did but in a slightly smaller area Dry that. Ah, uh, later, Sam. Oh, unless he's already gone. Uh, figured I want to watch some Blood Angels while I figure out what I even have for my Blood Angels. <laughs> well, that's always good. Welcome. Uh, hey, you hit the right night then, because I wasn't planning on doing Blood Angels tonight. It just kind of worked out that way. Right, so that's the corrosion. That's uh, So that brings them to this sort of stage. So now what I'll do is I'll do the eagle. So go back and get some metallic again. So actually there's a couple of tips you can, I can show you here. Um, so let me show you a, a really easy way. And I'll show you a equally easy way. If I can find my pen. So yeah, here we go. Right. This is really good for vehicles. Yeah, I was explaining this to Jack a while ago. I'll show it on one of these marines, the dark marine. So when you're doing black, and you want to be doing, or you're doing any kind of scratches, yeah? So, you, you know, you're doing scratches in metal and you've got quite a dull metal and you want to pick up, like, for example, along the um, the eagle here, yeah? So there's a couple of ways you could go. You could get a bit of sponge, chip it on there, or you could wipe it across, yeah? That would be fine. What you can also get, and this is really good for tanks, scale models use this, I used, used to use this all the time. Get yourself a um, graphite pencil, yeah? It has to be graphite, not not like a um, writing pencil. It must be an artist sketch pencil because it needs to be proper graphite. Yeah, nice soft one. So you, ideally, you want like a, a, a reasonably soft. You can get a variety of colours. I've gone with a sort of slightly gun metal uh, one here. And then what you can do is you can just literally draw in your scratches. So you can just rub it along the edge like that. There you go, and you will get a really natural, worn, as if they've gone over it with boots. Look to the metal. Now clearly, if I rub that vigorously, it will rub off. Yeah, I could, I could take that off. I could, I could blur it away. Most of it will stay on there. But as it's on the base, and I'm probably going to seal it. I'll put pigments on there, or just not handle that bit that much. That works perfectly fine. So this is it's not something I'd normally do on a base. You know, you can just do a few scratches here and there. You could do it on the tread pattern, just scrape it across. Anything you want, you get some natural effects. Where it's really good is on tanks, yeah, around hatches and so on. So you'll see the falchion, hopefully, around that hatch. Um, lead, yeah, lead pencil, graphite pencil. Another good way of doing it. I uh, did not expect to even have Blood Angels, and then I noticed all the models I got through trade were Blood Angels. Nice! <laughs> it looks like you're doing a Blood Angels army then, uh, Sentinel. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, who says painting's hard? There you go. You just. You just draw in all your metal effects. Yeah? So, like along here, so like if I wanted it on these little bits of spar. You can literally just colour them in with a pencil. There we go. 
that easy. Honestly, it's that easy. Yeah, do our minis as well. So I take. Uh, I kind of already done it on his bolt gun. So let's let's take this fella here. Yeah. So you've got your you got your blood angel here, and you wanted to do some chips and scratches around the boots. Get your pencil. Hold him in place so he doesn't move around so much. And just do the same. And just tap it along the edge there like that. There you go. Instant, nice, shiny weathering with absolutely zero ninja brush skills. And then when he's stuck on the base, that ain't going to come off. Pencil. Dead easy. Or use a sponge, or use a brush. Whatever you like. Uh, let's get rid of that over there then. Right, so where are these now? Right, and like I said, I could get a bit of sponge and do exactly the same with some metallic paint. So if I got a... Something like a Rune Fang Steel Iron Break is probably better. I don't want anything too bright. Yeah, I was trying to build a Space Wolf army. I guess things change fast. <laughs> Well, you'd be doing a Blood Angels and then a Space Wolf Army. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. I am. <laughs> That's my next Legion Force after this lot will be uh, Space Wolves. So let me get a nice new bit of sponge. If I get a slightly more... And that's the other thing as well with sponge, right? So when you're doing your chipping, don't forget sponge is not only different shapes and textures, it's different uh, resistances as well. So this is really soft. So this is great for doing natural little marks or washes or stains. This one's better if you want to do kind of rubs, yeah? So if I get some of the uh, Runefang steel on it, get rid of most of it off, because I really don't want too much on there. Let's just see how that looks. There you go. Probably a little bit too much. And then when I had, where I had that Aquila, this will ruin it, but it doesn't really matter, it's a base. I'm gonna just use it as a demo. You can also just rub across with your bit of sponge and that'll have the same effect that'll just pick up some of the um, the raised edges much like a dry brush but with a piece of sponge yeah there you go I think it's cack now but you get the idea I can go back and add wash over that again and kill it and knock it back again Uh, I'm guessing I won't be picking up the uh, Varagir Terminators yet. Yeah, um, well, you know, I don't know. I, they're not that bad. The problem with them is the bits that are missing and the banana fur. But the banana fur I can sculpt over and the weapons I can fix. But the rest of the sculpts aren't that bad. Yeah. Uh, three and a half K of mostly boots on the ground is just done counting the points. Nice. That's a good size army, actually, then. And if that's mostly boots on the ground, that's a lot of infantry as well. That is good. Right, let's knock this back again because I think it's too bright. So, what can I do now to take this back? So I need to do the earth areas. So I think I'm going to do them in a storm vermin fur. So what I'm going to do is use pigments, I think. That's probably the best way to do it. I'll get some storm vermin fur. And then probably just some deck tan, just to give it a base. And then I'll put pigments over the top of it. So this will look really messy. That's okay. It's meant to. Well, not meant to. It just doesn't matter. And you'll see why. Uh, go to my crappy brush. Just block this out. What I should really do after I've done this stage is seal it with a bit of gloss varnish because I'm going to go over with pigments and some white spirit. But with the base, I'm really not too bothered about damaging the underlying paintwork. It, it just all kind of gets added to anyway.
<laughs> Why are Imperial things always so rusted, dirty, decayed, using an army of lobotomized cyborg slaves to scrub the floor till it's spotless is far more grimdark? Well, yes, I kind of agree. However, it's easier to paint this way. <laughs> Yeah, well, at least you've only got a pile of shame on at first, okay? I've now had to put safety and avalanche notices around my mountain of shame. Don't judge me! <laughs> uh, right, I'm going to let that dry and carry back on with these while that's, this lot's all uh, sorting itself out. Right, where did I get to? So I did the scrolls. Uh, I can probably come back and do his hair a bit more. Uh, but it's, it's it'll do for now and the scroll works all right So that's one less job done What I could do is start messing about with the gold a little bit more Maybe pull some of this gold back into a shadow Have I missed anything else? Oh, uh, the blood drops. I haven't done the blood drops. Okay, let's do the blood drops uh, What do I need? Uh, water block of purple. Let's do water block of purple Kind of making this up as I go along now. I think the little blood files need to be quite bright. Uh, I quite like the purple look of them. Let's uh, dig out some Empress children in a bit. How are we doing? Half past. So I'll do these and then we'll finish. I think we'll finish tonight with the, um, the blood effects on the Beast of Nurgle. If it was a bit cannier, what I'd do is go around this and actually paint the um, frame as well. But I'm going to do it in the same colour as the Blood Drop. So I'm just going to base it first of all using that Warp Block Purple. Probably take a couple of coats. Any other blood drops? I don't think he has, which is good. Let's have a look at this guy. Have you got any? Yes, you have on these. Ooh, that's going to be a hideous contrast, but never mind. So war block purple over black clearly is going to desaturate massively. But I'm not too bothered because I don't want it to be too bright. I'd rather have a very, very sharp highlight on it instead. The other reason being, if you have that really sharp transition, it looks a bit shinier. Come back and give that another coat. anything else there? No, there's no other blood drops. He's kind of got a skull. Any eagle going on there in the Voltron, I'm not too worried about little details like that for the moment. This guy has... has he got any? No, it doesn't look like it. He has got this seal. I'm going to do that in the same war block. And I'll show you a little trick for doing these. Super easy on Blood Angels. Has he got a seal? Yes, he has. Come back and change this as well. I'm going to give this a black kind of disc, and I'll probably pick the skull out and bone. Oh, is the blood drop dried yet? Not quite. So I'll come back to that. What are these doing? Also not dried yet. That's rather annoying. So, okay. 
Okay, fine, fine. While it's doing that then, uh, I will come back and do a couple of details on the bolters. So, I'm going to use some scale 75 heavy metal. It's got quite a nice little um, blue tint to this as well. So it works really well with the Blood Angels. Uh, so now I have a tower army that just sits in the corner. Thanks to Swap Meet, we had a few LGS, <laughs> had a your LGS and a Blood Angels army due in part thanks to that as well. Nice. So it sounds like you need to pick one, uh, Sentel, and uh, just 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 crack on with it. Actually, we'll talk about that in a bit because uh, I have a question you lot when I get to the end of the stream. Right, so this is the heavy metal. So just while I'm waiting for things to dry, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to pick out the highlights on the bolter. So the obvious one is just along the top here. And just underneath. And then the same on that side there. Nice simple job. And then I'll do the same on the scope. Just pick out that line. There's another one that will run along here. And then I'll just continue along here as well. Right, I'll do. I'll do the other two guys while uh, I'm waiting for that walk lot purple. The other thing you can do as well when you're doing this, you don't have to do a line. What's quite nice is to do tiny little um, vertical strokes along the highlight. You get a little bit more texture to the metal. You can quite see that. You get a little more interest here. Yeah? So rather than do a clean line of your edge highlight, you can just tap the tip of your brush on the edge and you get something a little more interesting. What it will create is those tiny little imperfections in the muzzle. I think that looks a bit more interesting then. When you got bits like this, obviously you can just do straight edge highlights. And that'll be fine. And another good place for doing tiny little, well, not verticals. But remember the shape that you're following. So this one here it curves away that way, yeah? So actually, you want to go with your brush strokes in this direction. Yep. And the same on the reverse side. I think I've already done this side looking at it. So I might as well just tidy it up a little bit. I'll do. I've done him, done him, done him, do him, and then we'll come back to that little blood drop. We'll do the same on the scope as well. So again, I've got the same volume along the scope. You know, it's a cylinder. I can do exactly the same with the uh, the brush strokes on that. And if you want to connect them up, yeah. If you want to, you just want to have those little imperfections, but you still want that super sharp highlight. 
You can do it with, a, again, a brighter metal, or you can just go along and just connect them all up with a, with a thin little line there. If you want to add even more, I mean, if you really want to go to town on it, you know, you want to do it for sort of display or something, add some tones, you know, add some glazes underneath of blues and purples. Yeah, I'll just add some tones into the metal. Also, super nice. There you go. On tiny little imperfections, you know, get another lighter metal or darker metal and add little dots and scratches here and there. Ah, oh, thank you, Santal and Tom, for the, uh, the follow. So there's lots of little things you can do. Yeah, they're not particularly hard. And we just add a couple of just light spots just on the magazine there. Maybe just one on the top there. Back in scope. That's kind of all you need to do. Yeah. Your brain will fill in the rest. Not on the model, obviously. It doesn't like brain sneaks out at night while you're asleep and does it. And then you do that side as well. Always remember if you're doing one side and you do the other. The other thing worth remembering when you're doing this is you know, the direction that the light is. So even though he's holding the gun up like this, the cylinder is still this way around, so you still want to do the stripes following the shape. However, you also want to get a highlight here because you've now got a new edge highlight, yeah? So when you do the, the, the barrel and you're doing it this way, the underside is now here. Yeah, it's worth remembering that. What you don't want to do is do it as if the gun is flat because the light doesn't behave that way. You want to, you want to do it that way up. Then obviously you do the uh, do the rest of the scope. here and I think we'll call him Don. City Gear cleaning up these models so much fun. It's, <laughs> that's why I like watching other streamers when I'm doing my model prep. <laughs> yeah, it isn't too bad then. At least you can just kind of crack on with it. Right, let's go back to that um, uh, warp block. Uh, uh, Warlord. Warlord purple, not warp block. So I'm just going to add another, another coat for this guy. Just for these gems or blood drops here. I'm too worried that it's a bit desaturated because I'm going to come back in in a minute with another colour. Right, I don't think he needs any more. I'm quite happy with that. That's fine. So now I'm going to switch to some Empress Children. Which I think is all there. Yeah, it's a lair. I haven't used this before, actually. Just reorder my brush. I could use a smaller brush, but I think this one will do just fine. So, let's look at the direction of the light to come from. I think I just want to follow it down this edge here. I'll do fine. 
Pull the volume out a little more underneath. And then the frame. This point. Now I'm going to do exactly the same with these um, seals. A really quick method for Blood Angels of doing the seals. This just do them straight over the black, just do them with a wall or purple or a purple, and then a nice pink just to bring out the shapes of the, uh, the actual seal itself. Include the middle, you want to do the middle, you do want to get some color into the middle, and you'll see why in a sec. He doesn't have a blood drop, does he? No. Actually, he does on his helmet, but uh, I'll do them separately. And then this fella, just do it across the top. And then there's a final, not quite final, highlight. I've got some squid pink. Because I will add white as well. Don't need much of that because it's uh, like a game air colour. Uh, let's go to a slightly smaller brush. bottom there and then same with this edge really just a little bottom edge because you get more reflection that way and let's pull that one down a bit more that was a bit too sharp Better. and then just a couple of little spots for the scroll the the, the seal Yo. And the same with him. Lovely. And some white. And this is literally just the last dot. So I'm going to add that at the top there and then on the bottom.
Right, I'll do. And the final thing I do is get a bit of Dragon of Nightshade. So this rather than purple, because I want the contrast, because the purple is effectively like a, uh, the, you know, the pinky purple is in the red, warm color. So now I want a cold color. So I just get a little bit of the uh, Drakenhof, not on the blood drop. <laughs> this is just for the scrolls, yeah. So just where I got the scroll, I just add in a little bit of that Drakenhof. You don't want too much, you just want a little bit in there just to give it the shade. There we go. Simple as that. And it's your seals done. So, blood drop. It'll be on the pink at the moment. So you could go in. Now I could go in with this with the Drakenhof. But I'm not going to do that yet. What I'm going to do is give it a red glaze. Because I do want it to look red. I just don't want it to look uh, the same red as the armour. So I'm going to get a little bit of um, blood letter. But any red glaze will do. You, know, you can make a red glaze and it's a really nice red ink or you know I, I would probably use an ink or a very thin glaze rather than uh, thin down a, a you know something like bloody red or whatever because you're going to get a much more matte finish okay. and I'll add some gloss varnish on this in a sec which will also darken it down his little blood file. Nice. So who else had a Mew Adam, didn't you? There you go, and that just takes the pink edge off them. dried already. Lovely jubbly. Oh that glaze is dried. And then if you want to add some contrast, come back to the Dragon of Nightshade. You can water it down or you can just use it raw and just push it around where you want it and then just uh, use it to create contrast into the shadows there. And that'll just refine your blood drop. So none of this is really complicated, you know, the, 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 uh, the wash is doing the work for you. So this was just glaze and wash. There's no real like magic brush strokes or ninja techniques here. It's all quite straightforward. There you go. But it's the little things that make all the difference. Yeah. So it's just that you know you got the transitions in the armor, and then you got that tiny little white dot there, and that tiny little white dot, and that little tiny bit there. Is what gives it its shine. Just no more than that. Yeah. And little things like that, you can go through the whole army and do them. You know. So they just they just add that little bit of extra bling. Because every uh, blood angel needs his bling. How are we doing for time? Quarter two. So I let that dry. Um, I think we're just about there with these guys. Yeah. Oops.
Yeah, I think we're just about there. I want to spend a bit more time on them um, when they're on their bases, messing around with the helmets and stuff here, because I want to uh, get a lot more contrast into the, the faces and the helmets. So I'm going to really push the contrast on the shadows, push the contrast on all the volumes on the gold, and add some more uh, highlights. So I want to take this up another level or two. But that, that's kind of like the nice thing you can do at the end. You know, when I get him based up, then I can spend a bit of time really playing around with these volumes, because that, you know, that's the sort of... Um, it's a nice little bit you can do at the end when you've got the luxury of the time. You know, just those little final touches of highlight here and there, light spots, and then it just lifts the model up just another level. So that's those three. The bases, I'd love to get them done so I can get the pigments on, but I'm not going to get that done tonight. But you, hopefully, if you've been on my streams before, you'll have seen the bases like 101 times anyway. And I am going to do a stream with some bases. Um, don't know when. Uh, not just a stream, I'm going to do it specifically to put it up on YouTube as well. So it will be there for prosperity, but I'll do a variety of bases. I'll do bases like this. I'll do bases with different textures and the pigments. I will do some that um, how, use the cork and use the texturing, and I'll show another couple of methods in those. Do them all in one. I'll do them all in one stream. What I'll do is try and get the bases at different stages. Yeah. So a bit like this guy, you know, so they'll be, they'll be done to various different stages and... and can see how the how the different methods work right so i've been waiting to do this guy for ages so this is the um play beast that was part of my tarsus uh word bearers army i um uh, took to a narrative event over the weekend uh, i was really quite pleased with them it took me about an afternoon or so to get to this stage he's not quite done so there's a few things i wanted to finish on him um I want to do the I want to do the eyes um, finish those off and actually get some teeth in the eyes and I'd like to finish these pseudopods up a bit finish the claws do a little bit more with the base and um, same with the boils and so on but what I'm going to do before I wrap up and before I talk about future projects is I just want to add some blood effect to this and another texture and that texture is going to be reflection so at the moment he's quite matte he's got slightly shiny and polishy pseudopods which is good and if i wanted to push that even further what i would do is get my red glaze and i would add a bit of satin varnish into it uh, and then i would just sweep that up to the tips and what you get is sort of wet glistening ends and more matte down the bottom uh good old beast noble points are great cash not so much yeah <laughs> to be fair yeah he 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 ain't he ain't the cheapest but he is a lovely model you know, it's. I can't knock it. It's a. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous model. Um, but what I want to do is I want to add a few more ibbly gribbly effects to him. So, what I'm going to do, I'm not going to use that brush. I'm going to use this old brush. Now, what have I done with it? Uh, got some clear red somewhere. Ah, there it is. Right, so a couple of things you can do. One, you can use the good old, no nonsense, blood for the blood god, GW Technic paint, nothing wrong with that. Yeah, it's a nice thick, viscous sort of resin y thick paint thing. Nice and shiny and gloopy. It's lovely. The only problem is it's not hugely controllable, you know, and it's a bit of a one finish, one, one look finish. What I've been using recently is. Um, this time you clear red. Now, this this is a cellulose paint. Uh, I think it's cellulose. I can never remember. It's but either way, it's it's not nice. It's pretty horrible stuff. You generally would not use it with a brush. You wouldn't use Tamiya paints with a brush as a general rule, anyway. Um, much better than the fine cast version for sure. Oh God, yeah. Jeez, it's the start on the fine cast. Hey, he looks really weird from that angle, doesn't he? That's kind of creepy. So I've got my Tamiya clear this stuff this is what i did my word bearers in yeah so this is what i put through the airbrush tamia is fantastic through the airbrush i love it however you do not want to a brush this on and b you do not want to mix this with water because it turns into a horrible claggy mess and that includes mixing it with like other non-cellulose paints like acrylic paints for example you absolutely do not want to do that except now yeah 
So I'm going to get a brush and I'm going to get some of my tanning clear there. I'm going to stick it somewhere in the palette. Where's a nice spot? There's a spot. And you'll see why. So I'll just get a good dollop on there for now. Really good dollop on there for now. And you see it's like a really shocking red. Yeah. All right, move it over a little bit and you can see it. It's too red. Yeah. If I look at this, it's just it's far too bright. What I want to do is turn it into much more of a blood effect. And that is when adding water and adding acrylics works in your favour. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a bit of, um, just a bit of model colour black. Not much. Well, I would if it was, if it was only coming out. Come on, there we go. And a little bit of water. I don't want it to be too thin, but I do need to thin it down a little bit. So I'll get a little bit of water. And I'll take some of the model colour black. Maybe a bit more than that. Yeah, get some on the brush. And then when I add it to this Tamiya Red, it changes the property of it completely. And it turns into this thick, gloopy, almost black blood. That's probably more black than I needed, so I think I'm going to go back and add some more red to that. Uh, Tammy Smoke, yeah, I just didn't have any Tammy Smoke. Thank you, Bal. Yeah, that's another good one. Um, I just didn't have any, unfortunately. But yeah, Tammy Clear Red and Tammy Smoke makes a really nice congealed blood. And actually, this mix as well with Yoohoo Glue <laughs> also is really good. Uh, it's a thing. Uh, so let me, let me get a bit more Tammy Red going there. Because that was a bit too much. And I'll get some of my black mix. That's better. That's more what I was looking for. This is see if we can bring the camera up. There we go. This effect. So it's not that different from Blood for the Blood God, but I can mess about with it and push it around a bit and let it congeal so I'm just going to work this into um, my little plague beasts gums and stuff just around the bottom of the teeth quite thick you know I, I sort of do want it to gather around there just around sort of boils and sores and things And I can go back with other effects and I can add more. I can definitely get it inside its gullet. That would be nice. Maybe even some of that darker. Around the centre there. There we go. That's quite nasty. Can do the same in and around these wounds and sores. And then in around the mouth. And if you have it too much on and you don't like it, you can still feather it away, thin it out. Till you get sort of the effect you want.
I don't know what's going on under his armpit, but I think that needs some as well. No, I keep saying him. It's an it. Or a her. Anything. I actually want it to pool and slightly congeal as well. I don't know if you can, it's very difficult to see because the base is in the way. There you go. Hopefully you can just let see it. Just under the tongue where I want it really quite wet and viscous. And this is where you can use that property of the it congealing quite nicely. It will, when it dries, it will, you know, contract a little bit. So you might need to go back and add a couple of um, layers. But it is super fun. Uh, did I use an airbrush on it? I used the airbrush for the base. Yeah. So the the um, the base colours are all airbrushed, and then the uh, the rest of it is just dry brush, dry brush and glazes. Yeah. So it's just uh, airbrush for the the skin, and then dry brush glazes. That's it. So all of the tentacles, all the pseudopods are um, glazed, uh, and the rest of it's just pretty much glazes. Yeah, there's not a lot of brush work that goes into this. It's it's pretty straightforward. I could go and add a bit more contrast under the slimy bit and tail. I might do that at some stage. I mean, this was literally, it was the last model I did for the uh, the Tarsus event. So it was thrown together in an afternoon very quickly. Um, I'd like to go back and do a bit more uh, refinement on it. But it's all right. It's, as I say, it's all right for just throwing it out on the tabletop. It's good. All the purple color. Oh, what the, uh, this bit. <laughs> These, I assume you're talking about these bits along the body, uh, and like in the sores and so on, and the mouth, these bits. So uh, let me go through what it is. So I just mixed up a kind of neutral skin colour. I think it was beige red, um, beige red, which I then added a little bit of magenta and a little bit of uh, blue, like sky blue. And that gives me a neutral skin tone. It was quite a cold skin tone. Airbrushed that over the whole mini. I then added Rakarth Flesh to that mix. And what that did was it desaturated it and moved it into a, a quite a beige colour. Uh, I used that over the highlight areas or the mid-tone to highlight areas. Again with the airbrush, just sort of focused on, you know, like these sort of bits here. Top of the arm or around the top of the slug bit, you know. Um, over the head, over this sort of top section here yeah um i then added in a bit of uh so i split that mix so that was my, my new kind of mid mix my base mix i then added some powdered witch flesh to that and desaturated it even further and that became my highlight so i just focused that on a few highlight areas that was all again with the airbrush and then i mixed to the to the mid tone the one with the rack off flesh i mixed more blue into it more of that sky blue to create this cold blue and then I just airbrushed that from the underside sort of upwards so that I had that contrast between some of the, the different skin areas. Yeah. And then what I did was I got some scale Indian shadow, which is like a nice sort of deep magenta colour. Uh, and I airbrushed that just over a few of the sore areas. Yeah, so like here, here. This is the bit I think you're talking about. So just literally little little blast with the airbrush there. Intensified it where it was like actual sores and deep sores with some caribou crimson, so that's just raw caribou crimson through the airbrush again. 
because it's a shade you can just airbrush it very lightly in there and then I dry brushed it I dry brushed the whole figure with a light dry brush I tried to focus the direction downwards because I wanted the highlights to be in the right place but a dry brush of the pallid witch flesh and that just helps then tie all of those little bluey grey areas they're uh, ready areas into the flesh that was it yeah and then just brings out the shape and brings out texture and then you just go in and paint a bit too hard so so the tentacles were just glazes just red glaze and um, i did a little bit of color work at the end so that was just uh rhinox hide and uh wall of purple so mix 50 50 mix the two and then just glaze the tentacles back so yeah it's airbrush then dry brush that's it nothing more than that and then glazes So anyone who says, you know, dry brushing is a, a rubbish technique that, you know, you shouldn't be doing, just laugh at them because, you know, I know lots of painters that use dry brush. Um, it's just a tool, you know, I just showed you how to paint with a pencil. <laughs> so it's, you know, it's a tool. Most of, the paint, most of the stream I was painting with bits of sponge and an artist pencil. Yeah. So <laughs> it, just use whatever works for you. Yeah. Uh, and there we are. That is my little beastie of Nurgle. We'll get him finished off. And you can already see where it started to, to retract into the recesses a bit more. It's not quite so in your face, the uh, the red. So if you want it thicker, you can go and add another coat. Yeah. I left it to the end because it completely murders my, my palette after that. And I have to go and clean the palette out. So that is all the things. That's me, beast. I've got me uh, Blood Angels, so they're just about done now, so I'll base them this weekend and get them out, done and out of the way. I'll finish these bases off, get some pigments on them, and they'll be done. Um, and then I'll go back to doing doing the ghosties, doing these guys. Um, and that'll be me Age of Sigmar army done. So that should keep me busy for the weekend. However, I did want to ask a question. Yeah, I said I was going to ask something. So I'm waiting for Titanicus to come out. Yeah, Titanicus is the next big thing for me. Um, no worries, always a pleasure, I'm at first, but I got a question, a question for you lot before you go. So I got two projects I could do. I say projects, not projects. I'm, I'm killing time till Titanicus comes out now. So I'm just going to be doing stuff for fun that I like. I'll be doing the, um, the, 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 the ghosts, the night haunts, obviously. I just want to finish those blood angels off. But on the subject of blood angels, I could do two things. So I'm gonna leave it entirely open because I don't care which one I do. They're both gonna get done eventually. So what could I do next? So I could do this. So what is this? This is the retro land speeder. This is the Forge World event only retro land speeder. Yeah, it will be blood angels. I'll tell you now, yeah. So I could magnetize that and I can build and paint this. Uh, so that's one thing. Or if it's not the retro land speeder, I could do this, which is the um, Primaris Repulsor. Also, Blood Angels, yeah? Reflects them terribly, that thing. I don't mind, I'm gonna do both of them at some stage. I fancy doing a vehicle of some description, just to, as I say, kick back. Didn't fancy doing a night or two. Um, so I've got to vote for the Repulsor. I <laughs> first got in there quick, Repulsor. You know, everyone goes for the big stuff. Um, so Repulsor or Retro Land Speeder? Which do you want? Speak up now while I am I am looking for uh, someone to host onto, and then you can. I'll count up the two or three evident votes, and if not, Honoured First will get it by default. Um, <laughs> okay. So okay, we got two for Repulsor and one for Speeder. So uh, we need we need more votes for Speeder if you want the Speeder. Uh, oh, okay, we're on three on three on Repulsor, one on Speeder now. Uh, <laughs> okay, well, I think the Repulsor's winning out at the moment. So have we got any more? We any any more for the um, the Speeder's cool. It's a Mark. It's Mark four. No, Mark six armor. Heresy Land Speeder. And I'll magnetize the weapons and I will do it in an alternate scheme of some description. So it will be cool. But then again, so will the repulsor. The repulsor will be cool. I don't mind. I have no skin in this game. I don't care which it is. I will. They're both going to get done. 
Um, just FYI, have fun with the grab plates when I'm building it. Oh, great. Okay. It's that much fun, is it? <laughs> Do I get multiple votes? <laughs> no, everyone gets one vote. Everyone gets one vote. I don't get a vote because I don't care. I will just paint whichever one it is. I really don't mind. Um, <laughs> uh, who have we, uh, let's have a quick look and see who we've got on uh, that I could host on to. So she, so she, so she's kicking around. She's doing Jessica Thunderhawk, and she's doing an amazing job on that actually. Um, so we could, we could host the show. She. Uh, Studio Day 7 is building... Ah, oh, Studio's got his one-year stream anniversary party. Oh, I got I got host to Studio Day 7. Studio's got host to Studio, and he's a cool dude. If you haven't been there before, he does um, cosplay props and he does painting. But I think tonight is his, probably his cosplay props one. But he's an awesome dude. He's got a great stream. He's very funny, um, very engaging. And it is his plus one year stream anniversary party, so I think that's cool. So, any more? Have we got any more votes coming in? Because if not, I'm gonna I'm gonna count up the vast number of votes and call it. Yeah, yeah. Five seconds. That's cool. Any more votes? Any more for speeder? Any more for repulsor? No, we're going to call it. We're going to we're going to do the repulsor then. Yeah. So we're going to do a Blood Angels repulsor, um, which is cool because I've been looking forward to doing that for ages. But they're both going to get done. But the repulsor is going to get done first. So there you go. I will be doing the repulsor next. Speed votes will be timed out. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay. Thank you everyone who's um, joined me tonight. Thank you for all the, um, the 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 followers tonight. I think we picked up an extra follower tonight. I haven't been keeping track of this actually. Um, I've no idea how many followers were on. I did have some kind of vague target in mind. I don't think we're anywhere near it. But I am going to start when Titanicus comes out, wrapping up street, uh, season three. Not that there is such a thing anymore. But we are notionally going to call it season three. Season three is coming to an end. I will say we will call season three when I have completed the uh, Repulsor, the Blood Angels Repulsor. Yeah, sounds fair to me. And then we will start season four, and season four will have a whole new host of overlays. It will be all about Adeptus Titanicus, because Squee, I can't wait till that comes out. I will be doing other stuff, don't worry. But it mostly will be about Adeptus Titanicus. Um, and I'm even thinking about getting some new emotes done as well for it, and actually kicking, uh, engaging a, um, uh, a commission to get some emotes done. Um, thanks, Ryan. Very much appreciated. Uh, thank you on the first. Pleasure as always. Thank you, Bells Champion. Uh, thank you for the votes. Thank you, uh, Sentilentorn. Uh, come back Wednesday, I think, is my next stream. I'm pretty sure I'm streaming Wednesday. Uh, and with luck, I might actually even have a partially assembled repulsor by then, which might be good not good. If not, we'll be starting it real soon. But the aim is to try and get that started next week, kicking off next week's stream with Wednesday. Um, so let's host over to uh, Shoshi. Uh, and then uh, I will be back Wednesday. So thanks everyone for joining me. Have a great weekend. Uh, if I don't uh, see you Wednesday, I shall hopefully see you before too long. Um, have a good one. <laughs>